All right, let's look at uh, three D trick problems. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, trying to figure out that diagram when it's in three dimensions can sometimes be tricky. So I personally like to redraw all the different 2D faces and just so I can handle the, the trig nice and easily. Now, sometimes you might end up drawing a triangle that's not actually drawn in the original diagram that's given. You might be creating a, a new triangle. Basically, when you're talking about 3D trig, angles that you find, you can find an angle between a line and a plane. Okay, so something like this. The cone has a the base diameter of 18 centimetres, slant height 15. Find the angle that the curved surface area makes with the base. Now, how do we find that? Well, the curved surface area, in reality, it's just the slant edge, the angle the slant edge is making with the base. So it's like saying this line is making an angle with the, the base. So we drop a perpendicular from any point on that line. It makes sense to drop it from the, the vertex. Doesn't have to be, but I will because I've already got the dimension of the slant edge. So that's a smart way of doing it. Okay, then join the point of intersection to the point where the line meets the base. Now in this case, it's already drawn because it's the diameter of the, uh, of the base. And that creates our two dimensional triangle. So theta is there, that's the angle we want to find. I know the base is going to be half of the diameter, so it's nine. And I just do it like normal two dimensional uh, right angle triangle trig. So cos theta is nine on 15. That gives me the theta's 53 degrees. So if you've got a line meeting a surface, just drop anywhere from the line down to the base and then join that point of intersection across and create a, a triangle. Now, if it's between two planes that are intersecting, so here's an example of that. ABCD is a tetrahedron, and all sides are A. Find the angle between two adjacent faces. So two faces are meeting each other. From a point of intersection on the line of the intersection of the two planes. Now, I can pick any two planes that I like. Obviously, they've got to be meeting. Uh, so what did I choose? I said BC is going to be the line of intersection. So I'm going from the face ABC, the angle it makes with the face D, uh, DBC, isn't it? Yeah, so DBC, the base of the tetrahedron. So from any point I like, now from convenience here, because I know the symmetry of the shape, I've picked the midpoint of BC. I'm calling that E. Again, it did not have to be there. It could have been somewhere else. But also, because of the symmetry, that I know that that will go straight through the vertex on that face as well. And then I do the same on the other face. So starting from E, and that one would go through D. That creates a two-dimensional triangle. The two-dimensional triangle is the triangle AED. And that's the angle I want to find, AED. All right, so say sometimes you might want to redraw it to make it a little bit more obvious. So there it is. I know AD is A. I want to find the angle theta. Uh, I really need another side, don't I? Okay, so I'll draw another triangle that I know. And I know the triangle ABC. Now, because it's a tetrahedron, all of those faces are equilateral triangles. So I know the angle ACB there is 60 degrees. I know AC is A, because all of the edges we said were A. I can find then AE. So let's do that. Okay, well, I know it's a 30-60 triangle. I could use trig or I could use my exact ratios, and that's what I've used here. I know the 30-60 triangle is always in the ratio 1, 2, root 3. So therefore, AE must end up being A times root 3 on 2. Again, you, you could use trig to find that as well, and however you prefer to find it is up to you. So I've got dimensions for AE. Now, I'm going to have to use the cosine rule to go and solve this problem now. So cos theta will be 3a squared on 4 plus 3a squared on 4. So ae squared. de is going to be the same length because of them all being the same equilateral triangle. Uh, minus a squared over 2 times a root 3 on 2 times a root 3 on 2. I end up getting cos theta is a third. So we get 70 degrees 32 for the angle theta. Here's an HSC one. So a surveyor stands at the point A, that's due south of OT. Uh, the angle of elevation, 45 degrees, okay. Then they go and walk 100 meters to point B, which is due east, which tells me that that's a right angle down there at the base. 
uh, for where she measures the angle of elevation to be 30 degrees. Express the length of OB. So OB was the base of that right hand side there in terms of H. Well, so many triangles happening in that shape. So I'm going to draw that, that triangle that had the 30 degrees in it and it also has OB in it. And we want to express that length in terms of H. That's just normal right angle triangle trig now. So OB over H is tan 60. So OB is just simply H times tan 60. I could leave it like that. Uh, tan 60 being an exact value, I suppose I could have said it's root 3H as well, because we know that one. Okay, show that H is 50 root 2. Okay, I'm now going to look at the other triangle with the 45 degrees in it. So OT is H, but uh, this is an isosceles triangle. Because 45 degrees, it must be my 45 degree right angle triangle, which we know is isosceles. So AO is also H. Uh, but now I'm going back to the other triangle that I haven't drawn yet. So AOB. And we know that AO is H. We just said that. Uh, we found OB was H tan 60. AB, they told me, was 100. We'll put Pythagoras on that triangle. H squared plus 100 squared will be H squared tan squared 60 degrees. But as I said, tan 60 is root 3. So square that, I get 3. Make H the subject of this. 100 over root 2, not quite how they want the answer. Rationalise the denominator. And we get 50 root 2, which is what they were looking for. Calculate the bearing of B from the base of the tower. There's the base. They said from the base, so I've put the compass at O. We want the bearing of B. So angle NOB is what we're looking for. We've just found that OA is 50 root 2. We know that AB is 100. But that's the angle that I want. Well, I'll actually find AOB, which is inside the triangle. So I can use the triangle now. And then once we've got that, take it away from 180, we've got our bearing. The tan of AOB, 100 over 50 root 2, 5444. So the bearing, 180 minus that, 125.16 as our answer. Okay. So 6C is all on three dimensional problems. As I say, I think you'll find it handy to redraw them in two dimensions. I think that makes life a lot easier when you're trying to solve these.